Hello and welcome. My name is James Rands and I'm the C4ISL Manager here at Jones. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this online intelligence briefing. Today myself, Derek Maple, Anita Torella and Tate Nurkin will present a session entitled Artificial Intelligence, the development of key technologies and the barriers to further progress. Just before we begin, I would like to highlight that the information used to compile today's presentation has been drawn from a variety of Jones content, but particularly Jane's reference resources at Jane's Defence and Technology Intelligence Centre. The term artificial intelligence was first used in 1956 when a group of academics founded AI as a discipline. Here we have a number of examples of AI development. The Air Force Next Generation ISR flight plan envisages a multi-domain ISR portfolio with platforms and sensors that autonomously process and share data they collect. This expects to leverage technologies like swarming, attritable and long endurance aircraft and hypersonic flight. Surprise events like Iraq's invasion of Kuwait and Russia's incursion into the Ukraine can force rapid reactions from state actors. AI-aided risk prediction and forecasting offers a look into preemptive measures, although the wide variety of sources and the tremendous amount of information in this area that needs to be considered remains a challenge. This data can be sourced from local news feeds, social media platforms, microblogging sites, press releases, etc. Machine learning engines can unearth patterns that point to event occurrences, such as civil unrest or involvement of security forces. Such engines learn and adapt while continuing to source and process more and more events. Social media can also be harnessed as a weapon on the cyber battlefield. It is capable of high penetration across many interconnections and access points, enabling, I think we've experienced this, users to share activities, locations, and expertise, or download documents, images, and videos, sometimes across several platforms simultaneously. Companies, governments, political parties, spiritual leaders, extremist organizations can all leverage social media to propagate their messages. In addition, Multiple access points connect directly to warfighter users in the theater, high-level government decision makers, and high-ranking officers in the chain of strategic and tactical command, adding a layer of complexity to operational security. You will have noticed that a substantial number of the programs we've already talked about are U.S. programs, and it will come as no surprise to this audience that the U.S. is one of the leaders in this field. Uh, it's conducted tri trials across all domains, uh, and already has a, a substantial amount of AI-enabled systems in service. Uh, both the Patriot and the Phalanx Air Defense Systems employ some AI, and the US Navy has stood up a squadron of autonomous unmanned underwater vehicles. However, the US Army is a long way behind where it was expecting to be. Around 2004, the US anticipated having about a third of all air platforms and a similar percentage of land vehicles with some degree of autonomy. Current estimates are that autonomous, vehicle, uh, autonomous vehicles such as driverless logistics vehicles will be... So it, I suspect it won't uh, come as a surprise to anyone on this call to learn that China has an urgent and acute interest in the development of artificial intelligence technologies and novel applications of those technologies to support several strategic national objectives. The two on the left highlighted in green, state security or really regime security, and national security defense are the ones that we'll focus on most directly here today, but, and they are a, a really big priority for China, a point uh, emphasized just last month by President Xi in a speech delivered at the start of a Politburo study session on AI. However, and this is one of the really important themes that I, I hope to convey today, China's development of artificial intelligence applications for military and security purposes is inexorably and extremely closely linked to its broader efforts to develop AI in support of all of these other objectives. And this means that through mechanisms that we'll talk about on the next slide, China's military AI development is abetted by the fast-paced and increasingly innovative activity that is taking place in China's cutthroat, very competitive high-tech industry and its academic and applied research centers in ways that aren't really replicated, at least not at the same scale, in the United States and, and Europe and other Western states. And China has not been particularly shy about articulating its ambition in terms of developing artificial intelligence. The most important announcement is the national, uh, sorry, Next Generation Artificial Intelligence Development Plan, which was released in July of last year. 
and laid out pr three pretty thorough uh, phases for China to become the global leader in AI development by 2030, including a big national security focus from 2025 to 2030. And that timeline is actually notable and pretty short um, under any context, but particularly in the context of, of the plans that China releases to become the global leader in dot, 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 fill in the blank, whether it's manufacturing or global S&T, which typically go out to the middle of the century. The plan has been effective in stimulating AI activity in China, in part because it provided a cohering and really compelling vision, but also because it has injected a lot of money into the system from a number of different sources, including the national government, but also local governments, many of which are now racing to build vibrant AI industries to take advantage of this investment and the urgency that is behind it. Uh, for example, Beijing, which already is home to the Silicon Valley of China, is investing another $2.1 billion to build a second AI industrial park. And all of this government investment is now bringing in venture capital as well, and that injects even more cash and even more dynamism into China's national AI development. And a good example here is a company called Sinovation Ventures, which is run by a man named Kai-Fu Li, and some of you may be familiar with Mr. Li. He's an important figure in China's AI ecosystem, used to run Google China, and has recently written a book on China-U.S. AI competition. But he now runs a venture capital firm, which earlier this year set up about a $900 million fund to invest largely in China's AI industry. Next slide. So that's the broad framework of innovation, AI innovation in China. And of course, it has real implications for China's military modernization. And there's a lot going on right now in China's military modernization. Um, it's hard to keep up sometimes, but I think the most important and ultimately over time most impactful development in this modernization effort is the ongoing transition from a force solely optimized for operations in informatized or highly networked, highly connected environments to one that is also able to gain and sustain advantage in intelligentized uh, warfare or cognitive warfare, or alg algorithmic warfare, which James described early on and which will play such a prominent role in shaping conflict over the next 10 to 15 years. And as hinted at on the previous slide, this transition benefits greatly from China's policy of civil military fusion or civil military integration, CMI, which is the mechanism through which innovation, technology, and know-how acquired and developed in China's commercial sectors is transferred to its military and defense sector and vice versa in theory. CMI isn't new. It's been part, a feature of China's modernization effort for 20 years. But over the last three to five years, we've seen a renewed and intensified focus on gaining efficiencies through and within CMI, the impact of China's AI development, adding speed, processing power, resilience, bandwidth, and new platforms and applications for AI research. I think the, the bottom right portion of this slide has a few, uh, a, a good list of the novel texts of interest including a photo of the prototype of the quantum radar displayed by CETC at the air show earlier this month. In some of these areas, like quantum science and 5G networks, China has really emerged as a global leader. And in others, uh, such as robotics and cloud computing, China has demonstrated notable progress and has also sought to merge these technologies with very appli various applications of artificial intelligence. Uh, in April of this year, uh, Lieutenant General Robert Ashley, the head of the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency, actually gave a speech in which he specifically cited China's efforts to use neural networks to fuse human and machine intelligence as a growing concern. So before I uh, turn it back over to James, just one second to, um, to talk about the future of China's AI development and really the military competition between China and the U.S. And this competition is dependent on several factors, but Perhaps none is more important than the capacity of both countries. This presentation has covered a little of the evolution and definitions of AI uh, and some of its common applications before covering AI in the EOV world and maritime and cyber domains. Uh, we've looked at four specific countries which are world leaders and the drivers and limitations upon their use of AI. Finally, we've looked forward to some of the developments and towards the uh, issues, technical and otherwise, which may limit the, de the development of AI. On your screen are some of the key takeaways from today's briefing. Uh, we look forward to welcoming you to future online briefings. Our next online briefing, which is the Global Defence Budgets, uh, will be taking place next week. Thank you and goodbye.